at dead of night on America's Remembrance Day, stilled for the first time since the rescue work began two months ago, even now there is a sense of awesome, gruesome power. Only the hoses continue to try to damp the continuous fires beneath. This lunar, volcanic landscape is a war grave, a death place as a consequence of an act of war. The eeriness of that still night is brutally disrupted the next morning. It's ground zero business as usual. Amid the breaker's art, this remains a scene of crime. Police deeming that recording it prejudices the search for the victims. But these are the buildings destroyed by the World Trade Center's fall. Even now, paperwork still flutters from the seven officers above. Dana Manana's name still on the door. A forlorn director's chair. An escalator to nowhere. And above, the buildings, still further from the centre, shafted and broken, gashed by flying debris. It's a, a requisition form from Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. They had uh, 22 floors of the building. The foremost weapon in New York's war to recover Ground Zero is the grappler. We were here the day Kabul fell. It was a matter of irrelevance here, for the enemy at Ground Zero is the pile, the debris, the twisted metal. Who did it is yesterday's news. These heaving mechanical arms are battling for tomorrow. What the pictures cannot show is the extent to which the ground literally moves with the sheer weight of the machinery that's at work here. Nor can it display the full intensity of the stench and the heat that's being kicked up with every shovel load. The wall of the North Tower is the last above-ground signal of what was here, some of it lying crazily against the building it destroyed in its fall. So how does this neo-military campaign to remove the debris work? The grappler creeps as deep as it dares and lugs at still steaming steel bramble, lifts it then to higher ground for yet another grappler to bash it into shape and lift it again into a waiting truck. And in this hour, this is happening in 50 spots across the site. Yet amid this mechanized confusion, the simple arms of firemen pickaxing, clawing away dirt, desperate to find some tiny remnant of a fallen comrade. Yesterday, a boot with a foot was found. The red plastic bags are for body parts. Your guys reckon this is the most logical place to look for, uh, for their comrades? We've been flying a lot of people around stairwells, uh, stairways, stairwells, and uh, elevator shafts. So that's kind of what this, this is, the, what they call the core area here. That's where everything, all the elevators and stairways work. And that's where we've been finding people. We found a lot in the other tower. Yeah. The last few days. But fewer and fewer now. Fewer and fewer, yeah. We had a, we found a bunch of people over here. Over here. Huh. How long have you been here? Uh, I've been here about 15, 15 days, not consecutive days. And basically they'll go on here until it's over. I guess so, yeah. In the hope that you find something. Well, yeah. For nearly two months now, these remarkable scenes have only been recorded by one man on an old high-definition 1944 view camera 
which produces huge high-quality negatives. Jell Merowitz will place them in the New York Museum. The planes came, one from that direction, into that building, went right through it, and the other one came from that direction. Merowitz spots unexpected surprises. Somehow, some man with an acetylene cutter, having labored to sever another stump of the tower, has found time for a sculpture of the Twin Towers and a cross. You're just finished, just the it. work of some oxyacetylene cutter spinning time. Yeah. Well, you know, they go through here and they mow down all the uh, vestiges of the pipes that stick up so that the grapplers can come in and take it and move it. And then as soon as they do that, they have to go down the next level and cut through that. The cross is a very dominant object at Ground Zero. Mass is held beneath it every Sunday. Yet there is no sense that this is somehow part of a war against Islam. As the sun begins to set, the cathedral scale of things that are left is clear. In the quiet of evening on Remembrance Day, I followed Joel Merowitz further into Ground Zero. I mean, we could walk down here, but you have to put your mask on. Because it really stinks down there. It's bad for It's bad to stand there. I don't know who we do with the coffee. All that's left of the South Tower is this one-story perimeter wall, etching out all too clearly the floor areas in which so many perished. You really feel something here that it's very difficult to describe filmically, but you feel it. You feel... You do feel that people died here. At the very bottom of the South Tower lift shaft, an exit door through which there became no way out. I'm doing it for history. I felt that if there was no photographic record allowed, that it was, it was history erased. And I thought, I had to do this so that people in the future generations could look at this site and see the wound that was received here, the aftermath of the blow. The wreckage of war may be more dense and complex here than a world away in Afghanistan, but standing here, you do think about Afghans too, scrabbling at mud and brick with their bare hands, just like New York's firemen. John Snow, Channel 4 News, Ground Zero.